Hey guys, Chris from Drift Outfitters here, and today we're going to tie the Dalai Lama fly. This is a classic guide fly uh, you'll find in guys' boxes from Ontario to Montana to I know one individual who fishes this in the Northwest Territories for char. It catches everything. It's a really easy fly to tie uh, and great producer. So this is a, a tandem fly. It's on two hooks. This is the trailing hook here that I'm going to use. This is an OPST swing hook in a size two in this case, uh, but you could tie this much larger too. I probably wouldn't tie it too much smaller. Uh, at that point, I'd probably just go down to a small sort of zonker style fly. So, so. so I've got some black six out thread here. I'm going to start this at the eye and just take it back down towards sort of just past the point of the hook, sort of in line with where the barb would be if this hook had one. And for the top color of this particular pattern, we're going to tie in some olive rabbit. So I'll find a strip here. So this is just your standard sort of zonker strip. Nothing fancy. If you want to tie larger versions, maybe you grab uh, a magnum sized one. But this is just a regular zonker. Now, I don't like to trim this beforehand. I would say leave the whole strip intact. So huge thing like so, um, just because it'll be less finicky overall. Now, uh, as far as how long you want to tie this, somewhat up to you, but just to minimize tangles, I would say, you know, go with uh, like one, if you're measuring the hide, one length, one times length the shank beyond that hook. So I have my thread at the back here. I find that sweet spot where I want it. I'm going to place it just right on top of that hook and catch it in with my thread. Get a few tight wraps on there, and I'm going to fold this strip over and take my thread forward. Now, if you want to dress up this hook with a little dubbing or tinsel or something, make you feel better about it, you definitely could, but it's not needed. I'm gonna pull this back over the top now, and just where my thread is, I'm going to find that spot where it wants to lie and I'm just going to part this hair, so I'm pulling it back here, like so. Clear up a little spot to tie it down, and we're just going to catch it in again on top here. Make a few tight wraps, trying not to trap too many hairs, and fold that back. I'm just going to whip finish there. Now it's as simple as the back hook is. Really straightforward. Um, it's more just an extension of the front hook you'll see. And um, that's just us trying to kind of tether this rabbit down to that hook. Now to make that a little bit more durable, what you can do, as probably advisable, is take just a little super glue and just make sure this hair's all out of the way here. Just come in and run a very small line down those thread wraps there just to make sure that they aren't moving, like so. so. All right, with that there, what I'm going to do is sort of pre-rig this for uh, attachment to the front hook. So what I've got here, this is just some braid. This is a, a power pro braid, you can use whatever you like. Uh, I wouldn't use wire on this. You could use mono if you wanted to. I don't see any reason why not. Um, but all I'm going to do is rig this exactly as if it was a, a trailer hook for a steelhead fly. So I'm just going to go up through the bottom of the eye here, just like so. I'm going to wrap that down around the shank toward the other side, and then go back down through the eye. All right, so I've just lashed that braid in around that hook, and it's just, see it nicely at the bottom of that eye ready to be secured to our front hook. So I'll pop that out. And for our front hook, what we've got here, this is a Mustad C52S uh, deer hair stinger hook in a size two. You could use any sort of streamer hook that you want. I really like this one. And I've got on there a quarter inch uh, brass cone head. Start my thread just back from that cone, bring it down toward the back here. And then I'm just going to lash in our tail. I need to figure out sort of how long I want this fly to be at this point. So, um, you know, you could tie this quite long if you wanted to, but you'd probably get that hook fouling around the front uh, pretty often there. So I would say, you know, probably a full hook shank back or so in around there from the, the main hook is about right. 
So just line that up again there. I'm liking the look of that. I'm just going to hold that in place. Put a few sort of loose securing wraps there. And I'm just going to look at this. I did actually get one of those strands of braid twisted. That's not going to have a huge impact here, but just of the interest of doing things right. I'll just take those wraps off quickly. Make sure that they are straight side by side. That's better. And again, measure things up to where you like it. And then what I'm going to do, you can see, I just sort of gently pulled back on that braid to make sure that's tight. Make sure both strands are the same length and they aren't loose. Okay. Tuck that back there for the moment. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these ends of braid, shove them up underneath that cone toward the front, go down through the eye of our hook, just like a steelhead fly. And then I'm going to go back through that cone. Can be a little bit finicky. There's one. We'll just do the other separately. There we go. Pull that nice and tight. There we go. Pops into place. And then I'll just wrap tight over all that braid. Really make sure it's locked in. This is a great big fish producing fly, so might as well make sure that's solid. Now with our hook, or sorry, our thread back at back of the hook, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back tight, this hook that is, and measure our rabbit so it's just the same length as our braid there. Gonna find the spot that it wants to sit. And then just lash that in. Yeah, pull that back, bring our thread forward. And I'm going to take this rabbit, and even though it's not a cross-cut strip, I'm going to start wrapping it. And you'll see it's going to give this fly just loads of body, because those hairs are being stuck up on end instead of back on a slant with the grain of the fur. So I'm just going to quickly wrap that up. Once I get up to the cone, pull tight, cross that off with my thread, and put a couple good tight wraps on there. Tidy up, catch any tag ends. You can fish the fly just like that. But what uh, what I like to do, what you'll usually see done on this fly, is a second strip of rabbit ad for a little extra body and for a little contrasting color. So white goes great with the olive. I've got a little white rabbit here. And I'm just going to measure this up to run about just back to serve in line with where that back hook is. Okay. So I'm going to snip off that length of hide. I'm going to place this, you'll notice I've inverted the hook here, and I'm just going to place this right on the bottom, catch that in. You can see this little uh, end of hide here sticking up above my cone. I can just push the cone up and I'll sort of conceal that, cover it up, and protect those thread wraps that are securing it too like so. So now I've got a nice two-tone effect going there. And this fly has a little more body to it. We can add a little flash in there if we want. This is some gold flashaboo. Again, optional step. If you want it to be a little more subtle, you don't have to put this in, but I think it generally is good for a fly. I've got about four strands flashed there. So all I'm going to do so bring them up underneath my thread here, over to the one side, tie them in there, 
And I'm going to grab the forward facing ends of that and just bring them over to the other side here. Like so. So that's shaping up nicely. Now you can leave this cone loose if you want. If you want to secure things a little bit here, you can add a little bit of dubbing. And so I've got here some olive ice dub. I'm just going to take a small pinch of that. And just wind it on right behind that cone. That'll help clean things up a little bit and just secure things a bit as well. Throw on a whip finish. And because we don't really have any exposed thread wraps here, just to further solidify things, what I like to do is take a little super glue, apply it directly to the thread on my whip finish before seating it. Doesn't take much, just enough to coat that thread. And then as you draw it in, it'll seat that right up into those thread wraps underneath the cone. That's good and protected. It's not going anywhere. And the flash I'm going to trim to be about the length of the body or close to it, maybe a little short. There we go. And this bottom strip so it doesn't get constantly fouled with this hook. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this off the vise. And I'm just going to find the spot where it naturally wants to lay. So just in line with the hook back here. So I can see where that'll rest on the hook. And then I'm going to just find that spot on the hide and I'm going to pop this hook right through the hide. So I'm just going to push it right through there. So now this white is actually threaded onto this front hook, like so. That's not going to slide around us now. It's not going to cause us any grief. That's a Dalai Lama. It's a great fly for trout, for bass, for char, <laughs> whatever it is you're targeting, give it a go.